Welcome to Detroit Diesel's program on basic turbocharger troubleshooting and wastegate calibration. Before we begin, it is important to understand the reasons for accurately diagnosing and correcting a turbocharger or wastegate concern. A review of warranty claims and turbochargers returned from the field revealed that a large percentage of failed turbos had not failed and were acceptable for continued service. Further, a large percentage had failed for reasons not the fault of the turbocharger, such as foreign object ingestion, lubrication problems, and mechanical failure of the engine. This means that replacing the turbocharger is not the solution because the concern is not with the turbocharger. Before proceeding, it is important you understand what a turbocharger does, how it works, and how to accurately troubleshoot it to find out what is really causing the problem. By delivering an excess of compressed air to an engine, combustion of the fuel tends to be more complete, resulting in cleaner exhaust. Also, by carefully selecting the right turbocharger and engine fuel settings, engine power output can be increased by as much as 40 to 50 percent. A turbocharger consists of three basic sections, the turbine wheel and housing, compressor wheel and housing, and a center housing that connects the two outer housings. The turbine and compressor wheels are mounted on the opposite ends of the same shaft and spin at the same speed. The heat energy and pressure in the engine exhaust gas is utilized to drive the turbine wheel. This is accomplished by channeling the exhaust gas from the manifold through the turbine housing of the turbocharger spinning the turbine wheel before the gas exits into the exhaust system. The suction created from the spinning compressor wheel pulls ambient air through the air filter. It is then compressed and forced into the charge air cooler where it is cooled before entering the combustion chamber. When mixed with precise amounts of fuel, this cool, high pressure air charge in the combustion chamber maximizes power output. A recent development on heavy duty turbocharging systems is the addition of a wastegate. The wastegate is designed to optimally control engine boost pressure across the entire RPM range and at all elevations. A boost sensing port on the compressor outlet duct relays an air pressure signal to the wastegate actuator. When desired boost is achieved, the spring inside of the actuator will compress and allow the wastegate rod to extend, opening the wastegate valve. When the wastegate is opened, exhaust flow is diverted away from the turbine wheel directly to the exhaust system. This will control the turbocharger's boost output to precisely meet the engine's needs and reduce the exhaust restriction effect caused by the turbo. High temperature exhaust, along with the heat generated by the compressor, induce an enormous amount of heat into the shaft and bearings. This heat must be dissipated into the engine's lubrication system. To provide cooling and lubrication to the shaft assembly, the engine oil pump delivers a supply of oil to the center section of the turbocharger assembly, where it is directed through drilled passages to the bearings. The oil then drains, by gravity, back to the engine crankcase through the return tube. If the return tube is restricted in any way, the flow of oil will slow, causing the bearings to overheat and potentially fail. Now that you understand what a turbocharger does and how it works, let's look at steps for troubleshooting. Keep in mind that we will be showing troubleshooting techniques as well as wastegate repair and calibration primarily on Garrett and K Turbo Systems applications. Troubleshooting the turbocharger system always takes place on the engine. If you remove the turbocharger first, you will not be able to effectively troubleshoot it. Removal and failure analysis of the turbocharger occurs only after you have followed a troubleshooting procedure and determined the unit really has failed. Identify the symptoms. Is it exhaust smoke? oil leakage, oil consumption, or noise. Do not respond to these symptoms by immediately removing the turbocharger. If troubleshooting a low power complaint, first review all the following basic turbocharger troubleshooting procedures. Then we will offer some special tips designed to assist with a low power complaint. Often the condition is turbocharger related. 
but other outside factors can create the same performance symptoms of a faulty turbocharger, causing the turbocharger to leak oil or make noise, such as a faulty air intake system. Listen to the sound the turbocharger makes to identify certain conditions. A high-pitched whine may indicate an exhaust leak or a leak in the air induction system. A cycling up and down in pitched often indicates a blockage in the air inlet duct, a restricted air cleaner, or a buildup of dirt on the compressor wheel and compressor housing. A sharp, high-pitched scream may indicate that the bearings have deteriorated and one or both of the wheels is rubbing on its housing. Inspect the turbocharger with the engine off and cool. Remove the exhaust pipe from the turbine housing and the air inlet pipe from the compressor. Use a flashlight and check for rub marks on the wheels and housings. Also look for signs of missing or damaged blades that could have been caused by ingestion of a foreign object. Check the compressor wheel for a buildup of dirt. Rotate the turbocharger by hand. It should turn smoothly and with minimal resistance. Check the feel of the bearing clearances. Rotate the shaft while applying radial pressure to the end of the wheels. If you hear a light scraping sound from either side, it is an indication that the bearings are worn excessively and the wheels are contacting the housing. Check axial play by pushing the shaft back and forth. Movement in excess of two thousandths of an inch indicates excessive thrust bearing wear. Inspect the turbine wheel for heavy deposits of oil or carbon. If you see there is a heavy accumulation of oil, locate the source. Either the turbocharger is ingesting oil from the engine's exhaust, indicating an engine concern, or the oil seal on the turbine end of the shaft is leaking. Inspect the compressor wheel and housing for signs of oil. If oil is present in the inlet side of the compressor, check the crankcase air vapor separator if equipped. If oil is present at the outlet side of the compressor housing, it is possible that the oil seal at the compressor end of the shaft is leaking. Because of the high speeds and temperatures involved, turbochargers typically use what is referred to as dynamic seals. These are highly effective as long as proper operating conditions are being met. The most common causes of turbocharger oil leaks are excessive engine idling, a restricted air inlet system, a restricted turbocharger oil drain path caused by a blocked oil drain line or sludge buildup in the turbocharger center housing, excessive turbocharger bearing wear, or excessive crankcase pressure caused by a restricted engine crankcase ventilation system or an internal engine concern. A turbocharger plays an important role in the engine's ability to produce adequate power. However, many acceptably performing turbochargers are replaced in a hasty attempt to solve a low power complaint. A few simple checks can verify whether a turbo is performing acceptably or not. 1. Verify the mechanical condition of the turbo as described earlier. 2. Visually check all charge air system components for leaks. Leaking hoses, broken clamps, even a leaking charge air cooler must be repaired. It may be necessary to pressure test the charge air cooler to DDC specifications to accurately determine if it is leaking. Also verify that all air ducting and the charge air cooler are free from restrictions or blockage. For example, clogged filters or kinked hoses. Number three. Check exhaust system back pressure using the DDC guidelines published in the engine service manual. A restrictive muffler or catalyst can dramatically reduce the turbocharger's operating efficiency. Number four, check the wastegate operation by using the following guidelines. A. Verify that the mechanical linkage of the wastegate is intact. B. Check the wastegate hose for leakage. Typically, caused by a damaged hose or loose clamp. C. Check the actuator diaphragm for leakage using a handheld vacuum pump. Do not use shop air. If the actuator is leaking, it should be replaced using the appropriate DDC service repair kit. D. 
Check the actuator calibration setting. This procedure is described later in the Checking the Wastegate Calibration section. These steps will give a good, quick indication of the turbocharger condition and can save time. Using these steps for troubleshooting will prevent unnecessary turbocharger removal and replacement. With the engine stopped, remove the air inlet hose from the wastegate actuator. Set a dial indicator at the end of the wastegate actuator adjusting rod to measure actuator rod travel and adjust to a zero reading. The indicator should have a minimum travel of 100 thousandths of an inch. Connect a high resolution regulator and pressure gauge setup to the wastegate actuator. Slowly apply the specific calibration pressure to the wastegate actuator for your application, allowing the actuator spring to stabilize. The actuator rod travel should be a specific amount, usually 40 thousandths of an inch. For currently calibrated wastegate actuators, a pressure reading within plus or minus 0.25 pounds per square inch or plus or minus 0 0.50 pounds per square inch of the listed value will be required to obtain the specific rod travel. Refer to your service manual for tolerances. If the pressure required is outside of this range, wastegate calibration may be necessary. Loosen the jam nut that secures the rod end on the actuator rod. Remove the retaining clip that holds the actuator rod end on the wastegate lever arm pin. Using the pressure gauge setup, apply enough pressure to the top side actuator can port to begin moving the actuator rod, lifting the wastegate valve off of its seat. Slip the rod off of the wastegate lever arm pin. If the pressure at which the specified rod travel is below the minimum allowed, the rod must be shortened to increase actuator spring preload. If the pressure is above the minimum allowed, the rod must be lengthened to decrease actuator spring preload. With pressure still applied to the actuator, replace the rod end on the wastegate lever arm. Check the actuator pressure again. If the actuator is still out of adjustment, repeat this procedure again. If the actuator is within the specified pressure and travel requirements, reinstall the retaining clip on the wastegate lever arm pin. Tighten the jam nut to secure the rod end. Following the guidelines presented in this video will ensure quick troubleshooting of turbochargers and accurate calibration of the wastegate for peak performance on your engines.